Well, hello, Grace Bible Church. Just wanted to take a few moments and share with you some things that I'm doing to shepherd my heart as we get closer to being able to join back together. Uh, excited for that day where we can meet in person. I'm sure this is the case for you. This is the longest that I've gone, uh, probably over 20 years, uh, separated from regular physical corporate gathering of the body together and uh, eager to be together when it is wise and appropriate for us to do so. Looking forward to that. And I wanted to take a few moments to share uh, just a few passages that I'm praying through, uh, thinking through in my own heart, my own life. Hopefully that'll be a blessing to you as, as you're preparing for us to, to get together again, Lord willing, as well sooner than later. Also, want to make you aware. So, some of you probably know this. Many of you probably don't. Early this year, we said goodbye to a precious family who was transitioning out of Grace Bible Church to find a church closer to their home, and that is Tommy and Julie Minahan. Tommy joined our church uh, just a couple years after we were planted and came over at a critical time and stepped into our uh, media, audio, internet, pretty much anything technology-wise, uh, he jumped in with both feet and just served us so, so, so well for many, many years. And uh, while he was at Grace Bible Church over the years, he ended up meeting Julie. They got married and uh, have children, and they are just, they have three children now, are such a blessing to our church. But for, for most of the time that they've been a part of our church, they've lived in Santan Valley. And I shared this earlier this year, they were making a transition and we were excited to see them make a transition to a church that was closer to their home. What's really uh, been a huge blessing to us is that all happened shortly before all of the coronavirus, COVID uh, stuff went down. And Tommy was texting and calling me right after this happened saying, how can I help? How can I serve? And uh, Tommy has jumped back in to help us. Everything you've been seeing on Sundays has Tommy's fingerprints on it. He's just been a huge blessing to us. We're so grateful for that. Wanted to make you aware of that. I know many people texted me, emailed me, thanks, thanks to the media team. And I've been passing those thanks on to Tommy, but wanted to give you an opportunity to pass thanks on to him yourself if you'd like. If you'd like to send him a note of thanks, you can email him at Tommy at gbcaz.org and just it'd be sweet to send him a, a note of thanks for all he's been doing i mean hours and hours of mixing music and helping with videos that we've been recording the children's lesson putting it all together the slides that you see before the service all of that stuff are uh, are from tommy and, and much more so anyway just wanted to acknowledge that tommy i've told you several times love you so much so grateful for you and julie thank you so much for freeing up Tommy to, to serve in that way. We're just really grateful um, for his love for Grace Bible Church and for us. So with that, a couple of verses I wanna share with you. Uh, these are common verses to many of us, and I've been thinking and praying through them, particularly how they relate to uh, my thinking during reintegration, whenever the Lord would have that for us. First is Philippians 2, 3 through 5 says, Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. The next passage is from Colossians 3, verses 12 through 14. So... As those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other, whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. And then lastly, uh, one verse from Romans 12 that we saw not too long ago together in our, in our uh, sermon series through Romans, verse, 12, or ch verse 10 of chapter 12, be devoted to one another in brotherly love, give preference to one another in honor. As we know, there's a lot of different opinions, thoughts, ideas, uh, feelings about COVID-19. 
and all that's been transpiring, all that's been happening. And whenever the time that we do get together is, things are gonna look different. And one thing particularly that's gonna look different is how we show love to one another, how we give preference to one another, how we consider others' needs above our own. And so pondering Christ's willingness to die to himself, to humble himself for our sake, is truly, truly remarkable to consider the attitude that was in Christ and the call for us to imitate that attitude, to have that attitude in us. And thinking and praying through, what will that look like when we're together again? To consider others' needs above our own. To, to ponder not our own excitement about being together and, and being able to love one another, but thinking intentionally what kind of love expressed truly would be a blessing to one another. This is going to take work. This is going to take intentionality. Where before, a firm handshake, a hearty hug would have blessed many. Well, now it may not be so. And we're going to have to be tempered. And I know many of us are eager and excited to be together and can't wait to be around one another and, and have even been thinking thoughts, oh, I just need it so much. I can't wait till we're together. I'm, I'm looking for that. I'm longing for that. And those are good longings. That's the right thing. But one thing we need to make sure we're shepherding our heart towards is the, the, the remembering of the reality that our involvement in the church isn't a self-seeking one. It's a self-giving one. And so we're called to, with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than ourselves. And I encourage you, as I have been doing, to, to pray through that and just ponder and consider and, and think on what would a consideration of one another as more important than myself, of others' needs above my own, what, what might that look like? And then thinking of Colossians 3 and the call there to... Uh, as ones who are chosen by God to have a heart of compassion and kindness and humility, what would that look like? What if, what if somebody else's preference is different than mine? What if I don't agree with their preference? What if I think their preference is silly well, or, or uninformed or ignorant? What should I do? Well, I, I'm to have a heart of compassion and kindness and humility. There's no room for arrogance in the household of God. Even if we think we're right about our views, we need to be humble. We need to be compassionate and kind towards one another. We need to be patient with each other as we work through these things, as conversations are, are had and somebody might do something that we're uncomfortable with. We need to be patient with that and trust the Lord with that. And somebody might respond with a, a level of bluntness that's hard for us to hear as we're under the mindset that we're just trying to show love and kindness towards them and, and it wasn't received the way that we intended. And you know what? We need to be patient with that individual as well. We need to bear with one another. And listen, wherever there's a complaint, there may not even be sin, but, but just a complaint about how we're interacting, wherever that happens, we need to forgive each other just as Christ also forgave us. And then verse 14 of Colossians 3, we need to put on love. The best way of maintaining unity in the body is going to be genuine love for one another. And then lastly, just considering Romans 12, 10, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor. What a great reminder that when we join back together, our goal is not to seek to convince everybody else of our preferences. In fact, we need to intentionally understand each other so that we might defer to one another's preferences. Well, these are some things that I've been pondering and giving thought and prayer to. I encourage you to do the same. Hopefully, it'll be a blessing to you just to, to meditate on those verses, to ponder those verses as we uh, anticipate being able to get back together. Thanks for watching. Again, if you have any questions, if there's any way the elders can serve you, we'd love to be available. You can email us at elders at gbcaz.org. You can email me personally at josh at gbcaz.org. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.